welcome to Bistec on Ghana Web TV, where we bring you business news that trended during the week and an exclusive interview. My name is Na Oyokoti. Sishapa Elo, a cyber forensic analyst at the Equine Bureau, is our guest on this edition. My colleague Mauli Aholimega has the full report. exciting edition of BizTech on Ghana Web TV with me, Mauli Aholmeka. On this week's edition, I'll be speaking with a cyber forensic analyst who will be teaching us a few things about account takeovers and how to protect yourself and your business. Before I introduce my guest, I'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back from that break on BizTech. My guest is Sichofer Elo, and he's the cybersecurity forensic analyst with the e crime bureau. Sicho, welcome to BizTech. How are you? Thank you. I'm very Great. well. Myself? I'm doing very well. Many Great thanks for your time. So today we're going to be learning about account takeovers. I, for one, I have no idea what are account takeovers. Let's briefly give us an explanation of what that account takeovers are. Okay. Thank you for organizing this program. I know this program is also to educate your. Um, your people, your viewers. Mm. Okay. Yeah. When we talk about account takeovers, account takeovers is a type of a attack whereby an attacker will be able to take over your whole account and or impersonate you in another um, session. Mm. Okay. So, for example, you own a WhatsApp, you own an Instagram account, you own a Facebook account. I will find ways and means, creative ways and means of owning or taking over that account. Okay. Now, let me just explain how this is done. Mm. Assuming that you are on a particular platform, mm. be it Facebook, be it a WhatsApp group, and someone just calls you and tells you that there are lots of spammers or scammers in a particular group, so they want to really authenticate if you are really the owner of a particular number or not. So they want to communicate a code to you. So they are expecting you to communicate that code back to them. Okay. And that is where it begins. Mm. As soon as you communicate that code to them, they take over your account. Okay. So at, the, at their end, what they do is they attempt registering WhatsApp with your, uh, your number. Mm. A code will be sent to you. Okay. And if you communicate that code, they take over your account. And that is how simple it is. Sounds very simple, but also very dangerous as well. Um, so for, for, for those who are new to this kind of um, fraud, can we classify it as a, as a fraud? Um, yes. One way or the yes, other? Yes. Okay. This sounds very dangerous at the same time. Very simple for, for those at the, on the back end of it. But I want to come down to for businesses who are not familiar with this type of fraud, how impactful is this account takeover for businesses? Okay. So assuming that um, you are a financial institution or you do some business on behalf of your clients or mm -hmm. your stakeholders and I'm able to take over this account. It means that I'll be able to divert funds mm -hmm. into other accounts okay, and it will go a long way to affect you. Mm -hmm. okay. Your reputation, everything mm -hmm. will be a stick. Wow. So I understand there's another form which is the business email compromise. What exactly is that? Okay, so business email compromise is Another creative way mm. an attacker could also gain access to your email account okay. and use that access to defraud your stakeholders. How does that happen? Great. So by using some slight variation in your emails, for example, I'm, I'm sure you'll be showing this to your viewers. Mm. For example, you have um, your email, for example, as um, maoli at maybe ghanaweb.com. Mm. Now, the L you see in there mm. could be changed to a capital I. Okay. But the person might not see it. Mm. This is not so obvious. You wouldn't see it so easy. Mm. Okay, so it becomes difficult for someone to easily see this. And they use this in communicating with someone else. Mm. So the person might think whatever email he is sending or receiving me. is coming from you. Mm. Okay, and there are so many ways they do this. They use um, so many attacks. They can use impersonation attacks mm. where they have 
tools online okay okay that can send an email on your behalf mm -hmm. without knowing your password okay so as i sit here now i can send an email on your behalf to your colleague without knowing your password and there are so many tools people are using for that activity okay so this also sounds like you're compromising one's identity is, is there another form an identical thing that has got to do with this perfect so when mm -hmm. it comes to the business email uh, the business identity compromise mm. okay it's not so different from the business email compromise but with the business identity compromise the hackers are now going around paying people to record videos okay. of their colleagues wow how let's say i'm having uh, a zoom meeting with you mm. an attacker will come here pay me and tell me that okay you know what just get me a video recording between you and Mali. that's all that's all and when you get that video when they get that video they are able to use that video to represent you, okay, mm. as maybe Maoli somewhere else. Mm. So, for example, um, usually you chat with your friends on Zoom, on uh, WhatsApp video and co. Mm. When I initiate a call, I'm going to play your video now. Mm. So, as your video is playing, they will think they are communicating with you. Mm. But the hacker is the one communicating with you here. Wow. So, they are only buying your videos, your recorded videos. To defraud people wow. that sounds really really dangerous because uh, you you'd have to compromise your data as That's well it. so for persons who are not privy to this how, how are they going to conduct managing their passwords should there be some variations in the passwords and all that what, what, what from I your think point of view we've already started with mm. giving the variation so we always advise that you shouldn't use the same username and password across all other accounts. Mm. So because of that, we are saying that you should have different passwords for all your online accounts. Mm. Why are we saying this? Why are we saying this? If I should compromise your, if I should compromise one password, mm. okay, to let's say your Facebook account, and that is the same password you use across all other accounts like um, Gmail, Yahoo, and Co. It means I could just pick the compromised one and try it against all these other ones and I'll be successful since you use the same passwords. Mm. Also we are saying that you should look at the length. Mm. We have people who have just four character passwords, five character passwords. That is so not you should keep a more lengthier at password. At least eight characters, four characters, the exactly. kind of, okay. And also like you said, mm. you can also make it alphanumeric. Mm. So if my password is Maoli at um, Ghana Web, mm. I'm going to change all the is into an ad sign okay or the eyes into a one a, a, a number mm. okay to make it a little bit difficult for someone to crack. Vary, vary the numbers a bit. Exactly. okay exactly. so for person two and um, okay sorry before, sorry for cutting you but no in addition to what i just said mm. okay we have something we call um the security questions okay excuse me to ask this question okay now what is okay where were you born um, I was born in, uh, in, in Togo, yes. Okay, <laughs> so assuming this is also part of your security questions, now that I know you were born in Togo, don't you think that is a backdoor to get to your accounts? I'm going to pretend as if I am logging into my account, which is your account, mm. and use Togo or use where I was born as my security question. Okay. Now I know where you were born, right? So mm. I'm, I can, I'll be able to what, log into your account. Mm. So the security question, we should always lie about it. Never give details. The actual answer. Okay. So now that you know this, let's try again. Mm. Where were you born? I was born in Kumasi. Kumasi, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Good. Yeah, so Sicho, I've been having a very interesting conversation with you. I'll just take a quick break. We'll back to you. I've been speaking with Sicho Fahello, and he's the cybersecurity forensic analyst at the Ecrime Bureau, and we've been learning about account takeovers and how to protect yourself and your business. I'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back from that break on BizTech. I've been speaking with Sichofa Elo, and he's the cybersecurity forensic analyst at the eCrime Bureau, where we've been talking about account takeovers and how to protect yourself and your business. Sicho, I've been learning quite a lot from you. I want to come down to the consumer. So how would one know that they've been compromised by this form of account takeover fraud? Okay, so it would be very difficult for someone to tell that he or she has been compromised. Mm. Okay. One thing you have to look out for is the red flags. Okay. Okay. You realize that all of a sudden you can't send images, you can't send pictures, you can't send um, messages, you can't send anything. Mm. Then you should know that, yes, your account has been taken over by someone. 
okay. So you just look out for the red flags. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone calls you telling you that um, he sent you a message or you sent a message asking mm -hmm. for some money. So once you know you've not done that, those are some of the red flags that you have to look out for. Okay. And um, I'm sure you show some of these to yeah. your viewers. Okay. I know government has been doing its bit by sort of creating some awareness. I know we have the Cybersecurity Awareness Month and all of that. They've been doing their bit of it. But from your point of view as an expert, what, what do you think government should be doing more in terms of creating awareness about cyber fraud and all these cyber security breaches that we, some people experience? Okay, I think that's a very good question or a very good concern you have raised. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing I will say is that I believe, or I think it would be unfair mm -hmm. if we say the government isn't doing anything mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, cyber security activities within the ecosystem. Uh, I believe that they are doing so many things. For example, the government was able to set up the Cyber Security Authority, the mm. CSA. Yeah. Okay. Now, the CSA regulates all activities within the cyberspace, within the ecosystem. Mm. Now, the CSA is now, is now bringing in some other um, things that we are supposed to look at. Mm. For example, um, we have um, the Cyber Security Act that was just um, enacted by uh, the, the, the country. Mm. Okay. Now, the Cyber Security Act, the Act 1038, right? That act regulates activities in relation to the cyber activities and all that within the state, within the country. Mm. Okay. Also, there are other things that they are doing. Yeah. Now, I don't, I don't want to give you spoilers, mm. but I, one thing they are also doing is that they are going to license each and every cyber security institution yeah. in the country. Because you, you can't just have anyone come up saying that I'm a cyber security person or I'm a, I work with a cyber security firm what shows that that firm has integrity. Mm. And they're also going to license all professionals. Mm. So if someone can just get up and say, I went to India or I went to US to do some ethical hacking course, so I am now a cyber analyst, or you can call me a cyber analyst, no. Mm. The person should have some integrity. Mm. Okay, yeah. so these are a few things that uh, the government is doing. Okay, all right. Yeah, so I want to come down to another key component of the fraud, which is mobile money. It keeps coming up almost every single year. I mean, the Bank of Ghana's latest report show that it's still rampant and it's still in the system and all of that. So for you, um, what, what do you make of uh, account takeovers for mobile money accounts? Okay, so I know uh, before we started asking this, because I'm, mm. I'm sure that you were thinking about some insiders who work with maybe the telcos. Mm. A lot of people have the same belief that insiders are always involved in this mobile money fraud. Mm. We don't have proof, we can't tell. Mm. Okay. But one question we should be asking ourselves is that how do we keep our wallets safe? How do we keep our numbers? Mm. Okay. You walk to, into an institution and they are asking you to provide your number. Mm. Okay. What numbers do we put there? Yeah, we go for do a we, conference, do we actually take exactly. your, your and name and your number and all that. That is one thing you should take into consideration. When you go for a security con uh, conference, mm. okay, they ask you to provide your emails and uh, maybe your number. You should be very careful. Don't mm. provide anything which relates to you mm. because someone could use that to what, hack you later. Okay. So there are so many things that um, people should look out for. One question you should also be asking is that, how do these merchants mm. who do this uh, Momo thing, okay, how do they keep their book when it's full? Mm. Do you know that attackers go in to buy them? Mm. They just go in to buy that logbook. No. That's what they do, and there's a case we investigate. They buy this from the telco? No, they buy it from the merchants. Okay. Because now the book is full, they will no longer need it. So they have to roll it over to exactly. another one. Now, how do they even dispose it of? Mm. That is another question we should be asking. So when it comes to our numbers, there are so many ways an attacker could get hold of our numbers. Okay, well, that's quite a lot. I've, I've been learning a lot from you. Finally, we're wrapping up. Um, what is, I've been hearing this term, social engineering, social engineering. What exactly is social engineering? Okay, so social engineering is just a way an attacker or someone mm -hmm. would um, trick you into divulging some sensitive information. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we talk about social engineering, there are so many ways. Okay. Uh, or there are so many types of social engineering. Now, let me just give you um, a few examples. Okay. We have something called phishing. Yeah, okay. I've heard of phishing. Great. Before. So phishing is just a way someone will send, will trick you into giving out your credentials, like right? mm. username and passwords, right? So assuming I ask you to give me your password to your bank account, your mm. online banking portal, are you going to do that? No. You won't do that. So I have to find a creative way of stealing that information from you. Okay. That is when I send you a link saying that suspicious activities have been looted in your account from Nigeria, mm. which is not true. Sometimes you see them in your emails as well. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I am only forcing you 
to go to and engage. click on that link. Mm. So as soon as you click on that link, you end up providing your credentials to me. And that is how simple it is. I think some, I think some of them also come in the forms of these uh, free, click here to get this free theme or this free money somewhere or something, but some money you never worked for and they're asking exactly. you to click exactly. on it for free. And that is how come um, a friend of mine got compromised. Okay? Mm. On, she was on Facebook or Instagram, I think, and they were having this um, competition where you needed to vote for someone for the person to win. I think it was a hair contest or something. And she just received a, a message mm. okay, from her colleague saying that, oh, my sister is in this contest. I want you to vote for her so she can win. Mm. Then they sent her a link. Okay, I have a screenshot. I'm sure you showed that to your mm. viewers. So as soon as she clicked on the link, she was asked to re-authenticate into her uh, Facebook account. Mm. And when she did that, the credentials went to the attacker. And that wow. is how they leverage on social engineering. She was just compromised so at that things. point. Yes. Wow. OK, so Sicho, final words from you. You're an expert here at the E-Crime Bureau. What, what advice would you give to people out there, especially businesses, about account takeovers and how to protect themselves? OK, I will say that, of course, it's, it's, it's a practice here. It's a practice mm -hmm. in the Bureau that um, you do not share so much information about yourself. You mm -hmm. find ways and means of protecting Manifacing. your data mm -hmm. okay, within your organization, because that's the only way attackers will be able to you know, steal some of your data. So you find creative ways of you know, keeping your data safe, mm -hmm. securing them, maybe password protecting it, using some data loss prevention tools or um, softwares to do this. Mm -hmm. So there are so many things that people can also do to um, safeguard their data. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now that we are, I think this, this should be the last one, now that we are um, approaching the festive season, mm. okay, I know a lot of people will be doing online shopping and all that. Mm. So please allow me to touch on that. No problem. Okay. Now, uh, when it comes to online shopping, okay, I know uh, the Xmas month season is approaching. We also have Black Friday and I think some Cyber Monday also, also yeah. approaching. People will be doing a lot online of shopping. online shopping. Mm. Now, you should be careful or be, be sure that you're not on a fake checkout page. Mm. Also be sure that you're not on a fake shopping page. Mm. Okay? Because when you're, if you're on a fake shop, shopping page, it means that whatever you are doing there is going to an attacker. Mm. And the person is harvesting your um, credit card details. Your cool. okay? And also make sure that whatever you buy, don't post it online. Mm. Why am I saying this? Someone, an attacker, possibly, who later come back and say that, oh, he's a customer service person, and he realized that you purchased this um, maybe gift or you purchased a particular stuff, mm. and he wants to check if you are enjoying the product or if everything is working fine. Now, he's just doing that to gather information about you and later give you a fake coupon. Mm. Those coupons will later be used to extract your credit card information. Without your knowledge. Without your knowledge. Mm. So let's be very careful when it comes to online shopping. Okay. Sijo, thank you so much. I've been learning quite a lot from you. Sijo Fellow has been my guest on this week's edition of Best Tech. We've been talking about account takeovers and how to protect yourself and especially your business. He's been my guest on this week's edition of Best Tech. My name is Mali Ahonomega. Many thanks for watching. Thank you, Maoli Aholomega, for that report. Up next is Biz Headlines. <music> President Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado terminated the appointment of the Minister of State in charge of finance, Charles Edu Boahin, after snippets of Anasis Exposé surfaced online. A statement signed by the Director of Communications at the Jubilee House, Eugene Ahin, said, after being made aware of the allegations leveled against the minister in the expose titled Galamse Economy, the president spoke to Mr. Edu Boahin, after which he took the decision to terminate his appointment and also refer the matter to the special prosecutor for the investigations. The expose is said to capture the minister asking for an amount of 200,000 US dollars as an appearance fee to allow a potential businessman access to the vice president, Mahamadou Baumia, in a quest to situate a bank in Ghana. 
The National Tripartite Committee has increased the minimum wage to 14 cities, 88 pesos. This follows the conclusion of negotiations on the determination of the 2023 National Day Minimum Wage at its meeting held on Wednesday, November 16. The determination was based on Section 113-1A of the Labor Act 2003, Act 651. At the end of the meeting, it was concluded that for the year 2023, the minimum wage will be pegged at 14 cities 88 Ghana pesos, an increase in the NDMW by 10% over the 2022 NDMW. Another source of income has been disclosed by the Minister of Communications and Digitalization, Esla Owusu Ekufu. According to her, the utilization of data can fetch the state huge sums of money when properly analyzed. Speaking in a media interview, Esla Owusu Ekufu said government will focus on safeguarding data collected, analyzed and utilized properly for the better of the Ghanaian economy. If you look at the revenues that these tech giants are generating from managing and analyzing and utilizing the data that we freely give them, the Facebooks, the Googles, the WhatsApps and all those mega platforms, then we, it gives effect to the saying that data is the new oil. Because if we effectively analyze and utilize it properly, it can generate a lot of revenue for the state, for our own development. So it's an area that we need to focus on critically as a matter of agency going forward. As we look at um, other means of raising revenue to finance our own development. And we're determined to do that. The Ghana Statistical Service has revealed that the producer price inflation rate for October 2022 was 65.2%. This means that between October 2021 and October 2022, the PPI increased by 65.1%, representing a 19.3 percentage points increase in producer inflation relative to the rate recorded in September 2022. The month-on-month -month change in the PPI between September and October 2022 was 15.4%. The producer price index measures the average change over time in the prices received by domestic producers for the production of their goods and services. The Ghana Standards Authority has informed the public and more specifically importers of used vehicles that beginning January 1, 2023, all used vehicles imported into Ghana shall be accompanied by a valid certificate of conformance from an approved body. The certificate, according to the GSA, must demonstrate conformance of the used vehicle to requirements of the Ghana standard for used vehicles GS4510-2022 road vehicles. This is in line with the Customs Amendment Act 2020, Section 61 of Act 891 amended and related legislation. Minister of Works and Housing, Francis Asenso Boache, has noted that proceeds from the sale of the Saglami housing project will be reinvested into another affordable housing project. He made this disclosure at a press briefing held in Accra. Speaking on the sale of the Saglami housing project, he said, discussions were ongoing for a private sector developer to take over government's affordable housing projects. Francis Asenso Boache further stated that the developer will be in charge of selling the house units when completed. <music> That's it for this week's edition of Best Tech on Ghana Web TV. But log on to www.ghanaweb.com for more news stories. Get interactive with us on all our social media pages. We are at the Ghana Web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are at Ghana Web TV. My name is Na Oyokote. Have a pleasant weekend. <music>